All right, ladies and gentlemen, how you guys doing on this Thursday, February the 3rd, 2022? Thank you for joining me once again tonight for another metallic episode of Music of Destruction. Bringing you the very best in metal-related content right here on YouTube on the only fucking metal channel you need. If you missed anything in the past week, click the I in the upper right corner, bring down that menu. Everything you need to get caught up is there, man. I'd really appreciate it. If you want me to review anything, make suggestions in the comments section. Slam, Deathcore, Metalcore, and Modern Tech Death are not welcome. Remember, subscribe and turn on that bell so you don't miss a damn thing when I post new videos you're looking at. One of the hardest working metal channels on the platform. No one's going to give it to you as brutally honest, upfront, controversial, opinionated, and unfiltered as myself. I hope you like that. If you don't, click the X and go watch a fucking shill. Welcome to Top 15 Thursdays here on the channel, and tonight I'm excited for another one of these episodes doing Top 15s from each year that I've been into metal. This is very, very exciting. Tonight we're doing my Top 15 Metal Albums from 1986, and this was another incredible year for metal for so many reasons, and when a lot of the genres really began to shape themselves with some of the earliest incantations here of Black Death, Doom, and of course Thrash, along with some NWO BHM bands, New Wave of British Heavy Metal, putting out more releases as well. Alright, so let's just get into it, shall we? Coming in at number 15, we have Nuclear Assault with Game Over, released in 1986 on Combat Records, New York Thrash Metal. This is a legendary band. This is an incredible album from them, one of my favorites from Nuclear Assault. I do have to get some. I really love the way they formed this record, the direction they were heading in. Got some incredible fucking talent on this. Great lyrical themes as it's like a catastrophic fucking apocalyptic explosion uh, on the cover with a red sky. I mean, that's like New World Order type shit. I mean, that's what this album's all about. It's about a nuclear assault from the elites. I mean, the lyrical content on here, absolutely amazing. The songwriting, the compelling emotional aspects of this record make it a fucking standout for sure. You need to pick this one up. Number 15, Nuclear Assault, Game Over. Coming in at number 14, we have Motorhead with Orgasmatron, released in 1986 on GWR Records. This is Proto Thrash and Hard Rock from the UK. I'm sure you know that already. Uh, being Motorhead, one of the most legendary bands in Proto Thrash and Hard Rock. This is a great album. It was a comeback album after less than two stellar releases before that. Very powerful. It's a faster album. It's more aggressive. It's meaner. It's edgier. And of course, I love the goddamn guitar work on this album and the trio of the original three still in together on this record. Absolutely awesome stuff. And I miss Motorhead so fucking much. I miss how great this band was because they really were one of the best in the fucking genre of heavy metal overall. Number 14, Motorhead Orgasmatron. Coming in at number 13, Onslaught with The Force, released in 1986 on Under One Flag Records, thrash metal from the UK. Again, this is a band that kind of flew under the radar in the midst of American and German thrash. The UK scene does have some good bands. This is one of them, Onslaught. This is a fucking awesome album. Picked up where things left off on their debut, and I love the direction they were going. This is darker, it's thrasher, it's got a tiny tinge of black metal aesthetic in here. I'd even say maybe a bit of black metal riffing in places. It's got some great dark lyrical themes and a very uh, dark atmosphere. This is a great record. Onslaught's The Force gets number 13. Coming in at number 12, Canadian thrash metal legends Voivod with Roar, released in 1986 on Combat Records. This one has a crossover punk or hardcore punk slash crossover thrash metal feel to it. Uh, I really love how they were kind of tapping into that on their earlier releases being that Suicidal Tendencies and Chromags and others and DRI and bands like that were doing it already. What I love about Voivod is they wanted to put their hat into the ring on that and they did a really awesome job with this record. It's one of my favorites from Voivod, Canadian thrash metal legends, man. Like this is a fucking impressive record and I love the direction they were going in on this. This is an awesome album, number 12, Voivod's Roar. Coming in at number 11, Possessed with Beyond the Gates, released in 1986 on Combat Records, Thrash Metal from California. If you know Possessed, you know this album. Um, it was a little bit of a disappointment 
for some people being that it was more thrash than death metal it wasn't as good as seven churches but everybody compares everything possessed has done to seven churches i think seven churches and revelations of oblivion are the best releases but beyond the gates was a decent thrash metal ep for possessed uh, a bit of a, a short album but still great for what it was possessed beyond the gates gets number 11. Coming in at number 10, we have Cro-Mags, The Age of Quarrel, released in 1986 on Profile Records. We have some crossover thrash metal from New York. One of the leaders of the New York hardcore scene, and Cro-Mags definitely took those types of uh, sounds and atmosphere and attitude, that urban sound. Cro-Mags, one of the best bands in crossover thrash. This is a fucking incredible album, and I have to get this one. This is their debut, one of their most, one of the most impressive <laughs> crossover albums of all time and Cro-Mags are absolute legends everything about this album is a fucking 10 out of 10 and I'm going to be buying and reviewing this one The Age of Coral from Cro-Mags gets number 10 coming in at number 9 Necronomicon with their self-titled released in 1986 on Wave Records thrash metal from Germany with a dark atmosphere could kind of say it's got a bit a little bit of black metal but not entirely like that shrill harsh cold black metal noise is not here but definitely have that dark occult atmosphere going for it. It's got a serious tonality like most thrash does. This isn't like a hardcore punk thrash. It's more of like speed metal thrash with uh, an occult lyrical overtone and themes and emotions and stuff. And I just really like the songwriting on this. I love the riffs, the drum, the bass, and the production and the vocals and the lyrical themes. This is a great album, number nine, Necronomicon self-titled. Coming in at number 8, Candlemass with Epicus, Doomicus, Metallicus, released in 1986 on Black Dragon Records, Doom Metal from Sweden. Okay, Candlemass, one of the pioneers of Doom Metal. This is one of their best releases. It's slow, it's dark, it's oppressive, it's doom-laden, it's morbid, it's fucking black, okay? And I don't mean black like black metal, but this is one of the darkest albums of 1986. And you got to remember, bands like St. Vitus, Pentagram, and Candlemass, along with Black Sabbath, really helped to shape doom metal. Well, this is one of the fucking albums that would do it. There's a lot of epic themes to this one. It feels very magical and fantasy-driven, but also very rooted in darkness, depression, and morbidity as well. This is an awesome record. Candlemass, Epicus, Doomicus, Metallicus gets number eight. Coming in at number 7, German thrash metal legends Destruction, Eternal Devastation, released in 1986 on Steam Hammer Records. What more needs to be fucking said? It's the follow-up to Infernal Overkill. Uh, this is a very powerful record, profound. It's got a very powerful statement, great fucking songwriting on this re uh, record, and some of the best Destruction would have to offer, and an absolute classic. I really love the songwriting, the lyrical themes, bass drums, guitar work. And the fact that it had that fucking staying power for me. One of my favorite releases from Destruction gets number seven, Eternal Devastation. Coming in at number six, Dark Angel, Darkness Descends, released in 1986 on Combat Records. Thrash metal from California with Gene Hoagland on the drums at the fucking helm. How can you go wrong with Dark Angel? You just cannot. They don't have one bad album. I'll be picking up some Dark Angel and doing a full review of some albums as well as an album ranking this is one of my favorite thrash metal bands dark angel are fucking legends this album was so creepy dark um and very oppressive very claustrophobic and had a very death metal like atmosphere but straight thrash metal and just some of the coolest lyrics and uh great stuff going on here i really love this album very powerful record dark angel darkness descends gets number six Coming in at number five, Megadeth, Peace Sells, But Who's Buying, a legendary record released in 1986 on Capitol Records. Again, thrash metal from California. Fucking Dave Mustaine and Megadeth, man. This is my favorite Megadeth release, Peace Sells, But Who's Buying. There were so many fucking amazing tracks on here. There's not one bad track on this record, and this is their best record, in my opinion. Very fast, aggressive. Uh, emotionally charged, angry, visceral, violent even, and very, very Megadeth, okay? This was like a middle finger to Metallica in so many ways. And I understand why Dave Mustaine had to do that. They weren't treating him very well in Megadeth, so he went on and made one of the best thrash metal bands of all time. This is an amazing release. It's legendary. It's classic. It's fucking Megadeth's Peace Cells, but who's buying gets number five. Coming in at number four, Metal Church, The Dark, rest in peace to Mike Howe, who passed away in 2021. Absolutely tragic, you guys. 
Released in 1986 on Electra Records, heavy power thrash metal from California. This fucking album, I'm telling you, man. I I spin this record at least once or twice a week. And to me, this is like Metal Church's defining album. I know some people prefer their self-titled and later releases. But for me, this embodies and encompasses everything that Metal Church were about. And I love the use of the heavy metal uh, epic uh, ba- you know the heavy metal epic guitar work with that fast thrashing this is more of a speed metal album in the th- on the thrash side than it is thrash with that hardcore punk political edge this is more about darkness and life experiences and just all things from the shadows and I really love Metal Church of the Dark rest in peace Mike Howe you are missed terribly we love you coming in at number three Metallica Master of Puppets released in 1986 on Electra Records The last album featuring the legendary Cliff Burton. Rest in peace to Cliff. This album, Metallica's one of their best in their top three for myself. You guys know I ranked this number three in my Metallica albums ranked video. This is a fucking masterpiece of thrash metal. There's not one bad track on here. Production is perfect. Lars's drumming is a bit sloppy in places, but Cliff's bass on this record is just astounding, especially on Orion and uh, fucking The Thing That Should Not Be, and Battery, and just so many great tracks. Disposable Heroes, Sanitarium, I mean, fuck, Master of Puppets, Battery, like, come on, you guys. There's not one bad Metallica track here at all. Leper Messiah is even amazing. Then you have Damage Incorporated. I mean, what the hell more do you need from Metallica? This is number three, Master of Puppets. Coming in at number two, Brazilian Thrash Death Legends, Sepultura with Morbid Visions, released in 1986 on Cogumelo Records. Death Thrash from Brazil, man, this is the album that started it all, along with Bestial Devastation, their their, uh, EP, or I think it's a demo, I think it's a demo or an EP. But yeah, this is, to me, their best full length. It's raw, it's convicted, it's powerful, it's dark, it's fucking heavy, it's brutal, it's aggressive, it's Max Calavera in his most primal fucking states, in this early Sepultura material. Igor's drumming on this record, fucking amazing, okay? If you go check out my Morbid Visions review, you'll see why this album go gets uh, placed so high on so many of my lists. Morbid Visions from Sepultura is a fucking brutal classic. Get it. Coming in at number one, Creator, Pleasure to Kill, released in 1986 on Noise Records, thrash metal from Germany, okay? I know a lot of people might like Endless Pain a little bit more. I do love their 1985 debut, but Pleasure to Kill, the most destructive thrash metal record of all fucking time, okay? This has everything. It's brutal, fast, aggressive, visceral, dark, uh, fucking emotional, very angry, very uh, uh, realistic, like with lyrics. The lyrical themes are just off the fucking charts, man. The guitar work is top-notch. The drumming is top-notch. Production, got that garage, dirty thrash metal feel. And of course, the vocals. I mean, it's creator's pleasure to fucking kill, man. I had to pick this one for my number one from 1986. There was no choice in the matter. Creator's pleasure to kill gets number one. All right, so there you have it. Another top 15 in the books here on Music of Destruction. Hope you enjoyed the premiere. If you're new, subscribe. Turn on that notification bell. Select all for all notifications. I'd appreciate it. Teespring.com forward slash music dash of dash destruction for merchandise on Teespring. Bonfire.com forward slash store forward slash music dash of dash destruction for merchandise there. Please go check out the new merch. Chanel's been helping me put up new designs. Thank you very much. If you want to support the Patreon page, the Seed Episode 35, The History of Cryptopsy is up there right now. Working on... The Seed episode 36, figuring out which band or genre I'm going to cover. Give me some suggestions if you want. Patreon.com forward slash Music of Destruction. Pick the $5 tier. You will get access for life as long as you're a supporter to this exclusive content. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share this video. We'll see you for Metal Album Warfare Fridays. Have a great night.